welcome to Creating with Gorilla Art. I got a fun project today and it's gonna be a roar. We're gonna be making this lion and I made it out of recycled materials, something you might be able to find in your house. Let's take a look at all the supplies that you will need. Ba-bam! You're gonna need some sort of chipboard. This is this, chipboard is like a really it's cardboard and you want a thin one. I'm gonna actually show you this other one I've got right here. This one I cut out of a box. You could use like a cereal box. You could use anything. They also sell chipboard, you know, at the store, uh, like a craft store, something like that. But in this case, I'm using this one that I bought at a craft store, I think a long time ago but I'm gonna also show you this lion face later and that one came out of the recycled box. We're gonna be needing a black Sharpie, a pink, the pink can be a crayon or a Sharpie, but something pink to do the inner ears. Then we've got our oil pastels and you do want them to be oil pastels. You can use crayons, but um, these are gonna smear and I'm gonna show you that technique later. So we've got a red one, orange, yellow, green, white and brown, a pair of scissors, pencil, and eraser. And then you're going to need something. Let me show you the lion again. We're going to be making this the lion's mane out of a grocery store bag. See? Just not opened up, but that is a grocery store bag. Now, Part of the technique for later is cutting into making this really fun, festive um, lion mane. But if you don't cut it and you just color it, you can, once you do it on your bag here, it's kind of hard to see, sorry, let me turn it back around that way. But once you do it on your bag here, you could do the face and glue it, and I'll talk more about this later. But you can make a mask out of it so that you can open up the bag and put it over your head and scare some people with your roars, your fierce roars. But we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Let's get to creating. Okay, so we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna be making this lion. You are definitely going to be able to change the lion's face a little bit. Maybe you wanna make a happier lion or a sleepy lion or a silly lion. This one's kind of an angry, you just woke me up from my nap lion. How do you know it's angry? Because it has these strong eyebrows right there. And usually when things are angry, they have this very pronounced straight line. It makes them look angry. He looks angry and he looks hungry. <laughs> We're gonna start with our chipboard here. And you're gonna need that pencil. And I'm gonna draw um, a little harder than I want you to draw. You're in sketch mode. Sketch mode is when you hold your pencil a little looser and you don't press as hard. That way, when you make a mistake or anything like that, you can easily erase it. If you press too hard, it'll be hard to um, erase it. So what we're gonna start off with, right in the middle of the paper, I'm gonna start off with drawing what shape do you think it could be? It's gonna be a triangle. Now remember, I'm drawing a lot harder than you should draw. You wanna draw super gently, kind of like ghost writing. So easy, whenever you're looking for, or drawing rather, you wanna look for shapes that you might see, and that would be the nose, okay? So we got our nose. Now we're gonna draw two lines on either side. Remember, you're drawing super gently, not as hard as I'm drawing. Here's his nose. That's silly. Doesn't look like a nose yet, but it will. Now I'm gonna draw, we're gonna draw part of his mouth. And what that is, is it's a little line that's gonna come around just like that. That one's a little happier looking than this one, the mouth. See, this one is just two lines. If you want him to look a little angry, don't do as much of a curve that I just did. Also, 
I want you to notice how big this is. It's not huge where it's taking up the whole paper, but it's definitely taking up a third of the paper. If you were to divide this paper into thirds, one, two, three, it's a little bigger than a third. And if I put my hand next to it, how big is it? I mean, your hand is a lot smaller than mine, probably. This needs to be as big as your hand. If it's not as big as your hand, I want you to start over and make it bigger, okay? Now here's where you can have a little fun. You can draw your eyes in any way you want. I'm gonna show you first how to do it like the picture. And those are gonna be two lines like this. We're making his angry eyes. And you want them to be about the same size. That looks a little longer. And then I'm gonna do big half circle. Imagine if you were to do a whole circle, it would have kept going like an eyeball would be. Okay, that's gonna be the white part of his eyes. This part's gonna be a colored eye. I'm gonna start right from the corner. Again, you want them to kind of look like each other. This one looks a little bigger, so I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna adjust it. Easy when you don't press too hard to erase and redo. Now we're gonna do the pupil. Kind of like doing smaller circles, you know, that are cut in half. Imagine under those eyelids, the other part of that circle would be. Can you see it? All right, I'm gonna switch over to the other lion. Here's this one. This one I wanted to be very awake and alert. Maybe someone just said food and his eyes went really big. I'm so hungry. You can do your eyes any way you want. You can even do cutie eyes, I don't care. We gotta make this lion masterpiece look like you did it, because you're amazing. All right, here's mine. There's my happy face. I'm hungry. All right, I'm gonna go back to that one, because we're gonna finish drawing that one in. I want you to catch up before we go on to anything else and come back, pause the video, catch up and come back and meet me for the next lesson. Welcome back. I'm gonna start off the next set of directions with this joke. Why did the lion spit the clown out? Because he tasted funny. Oh, <laughs> too funny. Okay, so we got this lion here. A little longer eyebrow there. And we need to kind of draw in his face so we can cut it out later. So let's take a look here. We got some very sharp lines. It's not rounded like you might normally do. They're a little different. So, but we're gonna start off with maybe the line right here down below its mouth. You don't wanna have it too big because remember, we gotta get this later on to the paper. So it's a straight line that definitely comes past the mouth. Okay, long line past the mouth. And you wanna make sure it's past the eyes as well, okay? Or at least the same amount. If I were to take my pencil, it's pretty close. And then we're gonna have two lines going off like this that come up probably right about where the mouth is. And then I'm gonna do two long lines right here. These are gonna go straight up. And they're gonna stop just above where the eyes are, see? So they're just a little bit higher. And then I'm gonna do two lines that come in a little bit. These are where the ears are gonna be. And then you've got your long line right on top. And remember, you don't have to make this perfect because you can erase it. And then we gotta put in the ears right here. You don't want them too big. I think I did a little big. So I'm gonna make it a little smaller. Then it's gonna have little 
little lines right in there. This side. That's starting to look like a little lion, huh? It's cute. Looks like a little tiger cub. Go ahead and get caught up. And then what I want you to do is take a Sharpie, okay? And I want you to trace all the lines, all of them. So go ahead and pause me now, get caught up, trace the lines, and then we'll start the next step. Well, welcome back. So I got my lines traced in, and I've got some pencil lines that maybe didn't get completely on it. If they're on the outside of your lion, like this is on the outside, I wouldn't worry about it because we're gonna be cutting out our lion. But if it's on the inside, you can go ahead and erase it now. Shouldn't take too long to do. And honestly, you won't even really see the pencil lines once we get to our coloring. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and color in his the white of his eyes. And I'm gonna use white. I'm gonna do it carefully because I don't wanna um, go over the black Sharpie. It's gonna be hard to do Sharpie back over it. So take your time with this. And get that on. There's my white. And now I'm going to do green. If you have another color at home and you want to do his eyes a different color, you go right ahead. I just like the green because it really pops off the paper, I think. I'm going to take a little yellow and I'm going to do these little tiny lines in there. This just gives some texture and some dimension in our lion's eyes. Isn't that kind of cool? If you look real closely at your own eyes, you'll be able to see these little lines coming right in the color part. Now what I should have done is I should have colored these in with the black Sharpie. So I'm going to do that now. all colored in when I color in eyes and stuff I don't like to do it wild and crazy I kind of just start one direction like in this case I was going up and down and do it all the way now I'm going to add the pink inside the ears kind of markers hard to tell a little bit that it's pink but that's okay so if you have a crayon or an oil pastel you can use a pink whichever you want, or paint even, doesn't matter. And now we need to do the nose, and do a red nose. All right, here's another joke for you. What time is it when a lion walks into the room? It's time to get out of the room. That's what time it is, ha <laughs> ha. All right. Let's take a look at our lion face again. Now he's got some eyebrows right there, but we're gonna do that in a, in a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to spread some darkness on his face. We're gonna be using a brown oil pastel. I'm gonna peel off the paper because I wanna use the side part. This is the smaller part and this is the long part. And I'm gonna use the long part to come in here and I'm not pressing hard at all, very gently because I wanna, um, I'm gonna smear it around later. I don't wanna do it too hard right now. Just carefully working my way. And one of the reasons I chose the chipboard is because it already is kind of brown. Do you see that I don't have lines? If I had pressed on the edge, you would see more lines like this, but I don't wanna see that. I want it totally flat and I'm just dragging it. And if you go outside the lines here, it doesn't matter at all because you're cutting it away. Okay. And then I'm gonna put in a little darker on his nose and maybe, maybe down here because that's where shadow would be, down below. So I think we can safely make it a little darker. And I think he's got some pretty colors. So I'm gonna add just a little more like yellow. I also took the wrapper off of that. And I'm just gonna use the long side of it. 
smear it around all over. I'm trying to get in those little nooks and crannies just by spinning it there. Isn't that cool? Maybe a little up here. Not too much. And then I'm gonna come in and he needs he needs some eyebrows. Er, straight across. There's not much arch in them because they're kind of angry eyebrows. Do you have that look when you're hungry and you just woke up? Or you're tired and someone's making you get up? So I did it with brown and then I added a little red there. Now what I'm gonna do, which is my favorite part, is I'm gonna take my finger and I'm just gonna smear it all around. And because this is a very soft oil pastel, it smears super easy. And it gives texture to your drawing. We have our shadow and we have texture coming in. A little darker there. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little white right here. Because sometimes it gets lighter right at your nose. And the forehead can be a little shiny. And I'm gonna put a little reflection on its nose and its eyes right there. A reflection is light that's bouncing onto, onto it. And you have to think about where your light source, if you had light source that's coming up here, it's gonna shine its light there and bounce right from the corners. And this would probably be real white too the light source a little lighter and then you got to blend it in make sure you blend it in that neat so I'm gonna let you get all caught up with that and then we'll head on to the next step welcome back I'm gonna be cutting out my lion now just using my scissors and you want to get as close to that black line as you can be I like to have a good grip on one hand and then I just go all the way around. And when it gets weird for this hand, see how much my wrists and everything are moving? I like to kind of switch positions with my hand. It <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna put him aside, throw this away, and we're gonna be grabbing our bag. This could be a grocery store bag uh, that your mom or dad might have, or if you don't have a bag, you can use a big, any type of big piece of paper. And honestly, if you were to use a color like blue or pink or something of construction paper, it could be really fun. It doesn't have to be this brown bag. But for this case, grab bigger scissors for me, I'm gonna cut out the edges right up there, okay? And then So this is our mane, okay? And do you know they say that lions all have a very different mane? No two manes are alike. That's interesting, isn't it? So later we're gonna come in and we're going to glue this right there, but we're gonna first color our mane first, okay? So I'm gonna start off, I like to start off with a circle. Can you see that circle? I'm just gonna sharpie it. You don't need to sharpie it, but I want you to really see it. And then I'm gonna start with drawing a line here, here. Do you see that? And then I'm gonna draw two lines in there, two lines in there, and two lines in there. 
so do it very gently very lightly because you don't want to see these lines later okay this is just to give you some guidance on how and what direction you're going to color his mane I'm gonna start off with the brown and I'm gonna use the long side and I'm gonna press harder than I did on his face but you want to start right from the circle and then go out you might even be you know twisting it a little bit just like this leave some space press too hard leave some space see how I left some space I forgot to do it over here but that's okay you want to leave a little space and just dragging it okay and you want it almost looks like a Sun it almost looks like we're doing a Sun now I'm gonna do it with the orange and it can definitely overlap meaning it can you can use your color right on top of the brown you're just pulling it out like this see it's already looking beautiful orange there I think it needs some red I love using all different kinds this one I'm gonna hold it this direction like that so we can get a little thinner lines. And I'm gonna try and do these right on top of the lines that you drew. And it does not have to be perfectly straight, like straight lines. Look at the direction I'm going. I'm going out like sunbeams, okay? Now I'm gonna do some yellow. And I'm gonna do these real fast. From the center out it does look like a Sun doesn't it so pretty and you know I always think it's fun to do some wild little crazy ones I'm coming back with that yellow and I'm doing some waves because my lion's mane is gonna be wild wild and wooly I even come back with some orange ones I like the wavies cute now it's looking good all right got that in there now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and cut where the lines were okay so let's start here and you're gonna stop right where that circle was you've got to turn your paper get it back in the view Okay. I'm going to cut these on. Be careful right here that you don't cut all the way up. You don't want the lines to, the cut lines to hit each other. Otherwise, you're going to lose a piece. And if you lose a piece, don't worry, you can glue it back on. I'm also like here's my next line but I feel like it needs another so some of them I'm cutting all the way to the circle and then some of them I'm stopping short you might have your parent help you with this because this can be a little a little confusing okay I'm gonna go all the way around I'm almost done and I'm cutting little lines. I'm definitely cutting on the pencil lines that we started with, but I came back and did a few extra. See how big this one is? I'm gonna do another line right there. And one right here. Kind of a big fluffy mane. Let's turn it. Isn't that cute? It's gonna be cute. I'm cutting off a little piece there because I want it to look a little more there a little more wild and wooly there's my crazy lion and I'm gonna take his face and I'm gonna glue it on that is the one thing I forgot to tell you in the beginning seems like I always leave something out but you do need glue and you can use white glue school glue I'm just gonna use hot glue because 
have it ready. I don't want you to use hot glue unless you ask your parents' permission. And then I'm gonna crinkle it just a little bit, not much. Because like I said, we want a wild and wooly mane. Isn't that cute? I think it came out so cute. I know that yours is gonna come out adorable. And I wanna see what kind of faces you created on your lion. So if your parents have Instagram, find me on Instagram and tag me with the hashtag Gorilla Art Studio or the hashtag Gorilla Art Lion. And you can always send me pictures on Facebook or your parents can email them to me, but I definitely wanna see them. And I look forward to creating with you on the next Gorilla Art. I dare you to be creative today.